Welcome back to the Political Roundtable. Doug Miles, Gary Schuster with you today. And, uh, uh, Gary, big decision yesterday, big announcement yesterday uh, with, of course, Mitt Romney picking Paul Ryan as his uh, vice presidential running mate. Uh, uh, any surprise for you, Gary, not only the choice, but uh, to have it done before the uh, convention in two weeks? Well, you know, Doug, I think it wasn't really a surprise. Uh, I was thinking it was going to be uh, uh, either Ryan or... Uh, or Portland, you know, for Ohio, but uh, uh, I think that at the end of the day, Ryan's probably better. This is going to be uh, an election about the economy. You might as well have the guy who can uh, sort of talk about this, uh, especially in a debate with Joe Biden uh, when that comes along, and uh, to answer all the critics uh, down the line about, uh, you know, uh, Romney's, uh, Romney's economics, uh, Romney's uh, wealth. Plan. But this guy, uh, Ryan, is, a, uh, is an expert. He's made himself an expert. He used to work with Jack Kemp right. uh, years ago. And um, he's, uh, you know, he's, a, he's, a, he's an economy whiz kid. And I think uh, with the way the election is going, uh, you're probably better off uh, having that, uh, that kind of expertise on your side and uh, being able to call on him and point to him as your, uh, as your running mate. Uh, uh, you know, all over the years, uh, the vice president or the you know, vice presidential candidate, no matter which side, has never been the defining moment uh, for anybody's, uh, any, any presidential candidate's run. Except for maybe four years ago, when McKean chose uh, Palin. Uh, that, that really was a firestorm, and uh, as uh, big a sweetheart as she was with the Tea Party, uh, it really didn't help her gain it probably hurt him in the end. Uh, whereas Ryan, who is a, a Tea Party uh, kind of guy who can bring together sort of the right wing and the, and the Tea Party group and some other uh, constituencies in the Republican Party, is probably a better candidate uh, down the line than uh, probably anybody else running for the children. I was going to say, uh, the Palin choice four years ago, uh, seemed to at least energize the campaign uh, briefly, but it just became such a media frenzy that it overshadowed McCain, and, uh, and his campaign was not run uh, uh, very well, just uh, going back and hearing the history of it now, a lot of uh, infighting apparently then, but uh, uh, four years later, uh, it looks like Paul Ryan obviously has a lot of experience in the House, I believe 14 years, he's uh, on the Budget Committee, I believe he, he chairs the Budget Committee in Congress, he put out uh, uh, some different plans over the last couple of years for uh, getting the deficit under control. So he's got a lot of experience that way, probably more than uh, you would say that uh, President Obama had uh, when he was a, a congressman and then a senator, right? Oh, sure. He has way more experience than Obama had. And um, like you say, it's, uh, it's good he's on the, uh, the economic side of, of the argument. Um, you know, at the same time, the Democrats will pick on him as being against the poor, trying to cut back on welfare. There are a number of, uh, of points that Democrats will make as to why uh, Paul Ryan and Romney of the ticket is not going to be good for the middle class and lower class of the, uh, of the populace. But, uh, you know, they can make the same argument on the other side that they're trying to do the right thing, and, uh, and Ryan has that experience in the House and other places, uh, you know, that he, uh, that he garnered on his way up to this position. Uh, he's been around that uh, legislative body for a long time. And you just mentioned it didn't take long for the uh, the Democrats uh, uh, or on all the uh, shows uh, last uh, yesterday and last night, even uh, this morning on the Sunday morning shows as we uh, take this uh, uh, report today to uh, come out of the woodwork and they're already hammering them. But, I mean, it's understandable. That's politics, but uh, it didn't take long, did it? Well, uh, I'm I don't know. I, I, I don't hold the tone here. I think as, as it goes on, Doug. I mean, it'll uh, it'll it'll be this, this is going to be a close election, but I think the economy is going to be the, the the real focal point. Other than Ryan can help. Us. Other names that were uh, put out there, and and Marco Rubio, of course, was the name that was. Uh, Seemed to be the favorite for a long time, Gary, of course, Senator from down uh, here in Florida. But uh, the last couple of weeks, it seemed that Paul Ryan was getting more, at least, uh, uh, 
name recognition, or at least being put out there, uh, more uh, carriages with uh, Governor Romney uh, throughout his campaign. But I think Marco Rubio uh, will be a big part of this campaign somehow, and, and he's, he's a name that's going to be in the Republican Party for a long time, and uh, depending on what happens this election, 2016 or even 2020, I think he's going to be up there, right? Oh, sure he will. He's, uh, I think he's somebody to contend with down the line. Um, you know, there was some concern that, uh, that uh, he was a little too inexperienced for this, uh, for this role, too young. Uh, in truth, uh, he's had almost as much experience in the Senate as Obama had in the Senate when he ran for president. So I don't know if you can make, you know, make those kind of arguments, but, um, but people do. And, uh, and I think Rubio is probably, he could do a lot for Romney from the sideline, especially in Florida, which is going to be a real key state. And uh, I think he could be helpful there. And maybe some of the other states, perhaps even out in Nevada, where you have a, a large Hispanic population. Uh, you know, these guys are going to need surrogate, surrogate speakers, surrogate uh, uh, candidates almost to uh, go out there and punch some of these uh, these hot spots, and uh, I think Rubio is going to be one of those in a small circle that will help Romney in, in a lot of ways. Gary, you've covered uh, several conventions over the years, several campaigns with uh, both the Detroit News and uh, CBS News. Uh, you, you know well what it's like on the campaign trail. Uh, uh, like we said, Paul Ryan has a lot of experience in the House, but uh, this is going to be something that uh, Nobody really can be fully prepared for. You never quite know uh, what it's like until you're through it, and he's in for uh, quite a ride, isn't he? Oh, sure he is. I think this was a shock back when uh, Bush won, uh, nominated uh, or pulled on uh, Dan Quayle to be his running mate. It was a shock to Quayle, and he, he showed the inexperience and some of the, the uh, surprise as to what the road was like. Uh, during uh, the campaign and also the uh, debate he had with Lloyd Benson. Uh, uh, Benson had been in Congress for a long time, sort of took him to the woodshed a little bit. Uh, it's, uh, you know, quote about the John, you know, John Kennedy. And right. Uh, just a number of things. <laughs> and so uh, I think Ryan is going to be in for a little bit of a uh, schooling, if you will, uh, on his campaign, at least for a while. But, you know, he comes from a pretty tough political state in Wisconsin. And uh, there's been a lot of uh, diversive uh, kind of a divisive kind of uh, uh, politics up there with the uh, recall election on the governor. And uh, he, he decided not to run for an open Senate seat and uh, was going to run for his, uh, his congressional seat again. And so... Uh, and, and he'll actually, you know, uh, I think this is right. I think he'll be able to run for his congressional seat because he's not a sitting vice president. And uh, if, he, if they lose the presidency uh, uh, vote, uh, he can still be a member of Congress, I think. Yeah, I don't think he has to give that up. So uh, not that he'd probably worrying about that now, but uh, that isn't a case where uh, he'd have to lose that. I know Bob Dole... Uh, uh, several years ago, gave up his Senate seat to run for president that year. So he, he did have to give up his seat. Right, exactly. So, uh, so I, I think it's going to be uh, it, it'll be a, it'll be a test for Ryan, and probably a little bit of a rude awakening, if not a rude awakening, at least an awakening of what it's like out on the road because it's not easy. I know you and I are going to be uh, heading up to the uh, convention in Tampa in a couple of weeks. Uh, uh, kind of takes some of the steam out of, I guess, the only surprise that would have come out of the convention. There's never really a lot of great news anymore, but uh, making this decision on Saturday of this week uh, takes that away. Uh, uh, really, what's going to be happening at the convention that people are going to be surprised about? Probably nothing, right? <laughs> well, probably not. You know, the, the, the conventions over the years, from the old Stonefield rooms in Chicago with Fred Daly uh, to the nomination of John Kennedy and, and, and other conventions, uh, this, these conventions aren't that way anymore. There's very little news made. The, the networks, rather than CBS, they were already cutting back on the convention coverage, except for the last night, basically. And um, it's, you know, it's a platform. Everybody sort of knows what the platform is. Uh, so it's, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not what it used to be, but it still has to be done. And, um, you know, some of the things that, that, that come out of, uh, out of these conventions 
are, uh, you know, for example, you're looking at uh, what's going to happen to Congress in this in this next election with all uh, 435 House seats up and having been redrawn districts because of the 2010 census. You're going to have some interesting races here. You're going to pit uh, people that, uh, you know, in the primaries, we have a primary in Florida on Tuesday, uh, you know, you're going to have people running against a colleague or seats uh, in states that have either won or lost uh, congressional seats. And you're going to have uh, 33 or 34 Senate seats up because they rotate every two years. A third of the Senate uh, is, is up for a re-election. Uh, there's a lot of thought that the uh, Democrats could lose the Senate here. It's going to be real close because you've got a couple of independents who are running, but... Uh, uh, you know, a, I don't think the Republicans will lose the House, but they do chance, stand a chance of winning, uh, winning the Senate. You know? It's going to be interesting to see. Uh, we'll be talking to uh, hopefully a lot of uh, folks up at the convention in the next couple of weeks. Gary, I know you're on the road today, and uh, good to get your uh, thoughts on this, and uh, we'll do it again uh, as news uh, breaks, and uh, thanks for joining us today. That's all right, Doug. Thanks. Always great being with you, Doug. Thanks.